Okay, so we're in Japan and uh, it's five o'clock in the morning. We've been on kind of an endurance run for the past week, working crazy schedules and with crazy classes and not really understanding what we're supposed to be doing or how to do it, but doing it nonetheless. So now it's Saturday, no more work. And we have a vacation, yeah. We have a, we have a two week vacation for the summer, by the way. We didn't really explain that, but there you uh, go. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> all of this like crazy work has been leading up to having a break of two weeks. And I booked a ticket, or two tickets, Eric's gonna come too, um, to Taiwan. <laughs> last week, what, last Friday? Uh, last Sunday. Last Sunday, so it's been I booked like it and we only had six, six days, days to get prepared for it while we worked a crazy hectic schedule that left us basically wanting to just come home and sleep. So, yeah. Uh, last night we packed all of our bags. I've done a little bit of research, but really nowhere near like how much you would actually do if you had time. Uh, our flight leaves at 7.50. It's five o'clock right now. So if you live in America, getting to the airport, you're supposed to have two hours of a wait, or you're supposed to get to the airport two hours before the international flight. We're gonna get there an hour and five minutes before. But it's the first train that gets to the airport, so like they have it's to be prepared. It's not the first train. It's not? It's 18 minutes after the first train. Uh, well, maybe we'll miss the plane. So it's five o'clock in the morning. We're walking to the station to get on the 522 train. We have two transfers. Then we finally get to the airport where they have my name wrong on my ticket. <laughs> my fault, kind of. And uh, What's a surname? <laughs> What's a surname? I don't know. I didn't I'm not a look. boy. Why do I have a surname? <laughs> I should have a ma'am name. So, anywho, we're on our way. We're hoping that we're going to be able to get on the plane. I'm pretty sure they're going to do everything that it takes to get us on the plane. Yeah, we'll see. She's more nervous than she needs to be. I also want to show, like, look what she's got. This is this bag that she's wearing. She's wearing this bag, and I'm wearing... Eric says that I do a bad job at videotaping, so I'm gonna try and start doing a better job. Slow pan. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just have book bags, basically. Mine's literally a book bag. Katie's is more like a traveling bag, but it's pretty small. And that's our 12 days worth of Taiwan gear. And I've been informed on the internet that that is way Way, way too, too much big. stuff. Like, oh, you guys have way too many things. But don't worry, don't worry. We've got be bread. <laughs> bread and a bag of and beef. And pastrami. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was gonna go bad. It's smelly. Yeah, it is. You can't open that on the train. They'll be like, is that a durian? And I'll be like, yeah, it's a durian. <laughs> gonna have to take that off the train. <laughs> it's now 505, and we're elevating. This was video worthy. <laughs> All right, so people wanted us to make videos just about anything. Don't put the meat on my head. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're just gonna, I don't know if this is gonna get on the video in the end, but whatever. So we brought that pastrami. Eric's decided that did the right time. Did we tell about the pastrami? Yes. Oh, did we? Uh, yes. <laughs> bag of meat. That's pretty brutal, isn't it? So Eric's decided that he should open the pastrami on the train. We can smell it from the bag. It's not even open. I can yeah. smell it. Can you smell it? Yeah, it smells like meat up in here. I think a lot of people are going to be upset. Oh, it's warm. Salty. Salted cured meats I find the most erotic. <laughs> being loud there's really nobody in here they've deserted the whole country apparently um, so we managed to get on the plane everything went really smoothly we got to Air Asia's uh, check-in counter and they basically just told all the people going to Taiwan to get in a line at the front which was awesome so it only took us about five minutes to get through check-in and maybe about 15 minutes to get through security thank you Japan and uh, then we got on the flight and it went really well. 
little bit of turbulence, but nothing too scary. <laughs> um, looking at Taipei coming in was really, really cool. And I have a hope that we'll be able to get a motorbike here and ride around a little bit. So I was just like looking at everything thinking, oh, we might go there, we might go there. I don't know if we will, oh. So it was really exciting to see it from the plane window. And once we got off the plane, we had to go to many, only, only three ATMs to get uh, money. First one told us nothing. We don't know <laughs> if like our, our password was wrong or if the ATM is broken. Oh, we saw that note. It said it didn't do overseas uh, cards. And then we went to another ATM. It was like, I can't do anything broken. And uh, then the third one that we tried was like, here's a bunch of money. Where's the money? The money's in the wallet. Well, we'll show you the money later. So right, here's the money. Is it that easy? It's that easy. So we, we got out a bunch of millions. And um, Ooh, it's way smaller than. We're super hungry. Yeah, really hungry. So there is a thousand. <gasps> There's birds fucking on the back. Thousand dollars and some birds fucking. There are, <laughs> there, are, there are birds fucking on the back of that bill. Wow. And we saw a. That's, um, that's, that's a big graphic. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a. Um, Soda machine it had sarsaparilla in it. Sarsaparilla, Kai, if you watch this, I'm thinking about you in the sarsaparilla, but I won't be able to bring you any back. And um, we saw a 7-Eleven with a bunch of cheap oden and stuff in it, but we didn't have any money yet. But we're following signs for a food court. We're still in the airport. We're following signs for a food court. Yeah. And check and out this, this sign. Look at this amazing. sign. Amazing. Yeah, it's a really cool sign, and it shows city names and it shows times and stuff. It's awesome. Very cool. Let's find some food. Food. Okay, so we found the food court in the airport, and um, there's a McDonald's here, so we actually managed to avoid it. <laughs> but I went over and looked at the menu, and like, I can read none of it, which is a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't read any of it in Japan, Well, you so. can read the katakana. Yeah, that's true. Um, so we went for kind of like a hot plate type food. And it looks incredible. It smells incredible. I'm oh. hoping it's incredible. How much did it cost? Do you have any idea? Uh, this meal, go down. Drink, rice, stuff. Quite large plate. Chicken, bean sprouts, corn, carrots. I wanted to call that cucumber. It's broccoli. Eggs. Sugar-free gum at the end. Um, mine was 140 Taiwanese dollars, so... We're just gonna call them kroners. Kroners. Do the math, dude. So it's about $4. Okay, that's not terrible. I mean, we're yeah. in an airport, too, so I'm sure it's gonna get cheaper when we get out. And so she got the chicken dish. <laughs> this for $4? You're like, oh, I gotta, we gotta yeah, talk it's gonna, it down. It's Hopefully cheaper, things yeah. get cheaper we outside. We should have bartered her down. <laughs> Shouldn't have been like, hey, give me food for free, please. And then I got the same thing, but with a beef variant. So let's go and have some. The chopsticks get short at both ends. You can eat with either end. Okay, get in there. Get in there. Is it good? I said pepper sauce, it's definitely peppery. <clears throat> There's cartilage in mine. <laughs> I'm glad I got the chicken. I fear that this video is gonna end up being a lot of like comparing Japan to Taiwan, but I'm gonna do it for one point. When we go to Yoshinoya and other like restaurants where they serve you tea on the side, it always tastes like ass in Japan. He's a hater. It really tastes bad. I mean, I'll drink it just because I need something to drink. But this is my first tea. My first like, this is the tea you get with a meal tea. And it's lemony. Eric thinks it's a bit spicy. I don't taste the spice, but it's incredible. It's really, really good. It's frosty and lovely and really good. I think I like Taiwan so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got the sarsaparilla. Very excited. Sa sa sarsaparilla? Sarsaparilla? Sarsaparilla. Um, 
don't know what else to say about it other than to open it. Now, I have heard that this stuff is actually popular here. Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen that on the internet or somebody, somebody talking about how strange it is that this, of all drinks, has made its way here. Does it smell legit? It smells kind of bubblegum esque. Yeah, it does. That's a bit disappointing. Does it taste like sarsaparilla? No. That was a big disappointment. It tastes like bubblegum. <laughs> One thing you should know about me is I hate bubblegum. The good news, of course, is they also have Twix. <laughs> so we made it into the city in Taipei and it is like gritty, like kind of like Bangkok, but not quite as gritty. And it's kind of like Japan where people are fashionable and stuff. It's weird, it's a weird cross section between the two places. Um, but we took this bus and it was like 140 Taiwanese kroners or whatever, which is like how much? Like four bucks or something. And um, yeah. it took us an hour to get from the airport into the city for that much money, so that's like nothing. And we got off the bus and instantly walked around the corner. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but in the distance you can see Taipei 101. It's right here. Which is really awesome. I really, really like tall buildings, so um, it's cool to just run into that. And like, it reminds me when we went to like Dubai, we just got off of a random station and then we were like, there's the Burj Khalifa. And like, here is Taipei 101, so that's really cool. But we're wandering around now trying to figure out where our hotel is and all we have is a crappy Lonely Planet map. So, not really sure. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna keep, keep, keep on keeping on. <laughs> So we've gone on our first ride for the, I guess it's called the Taipei Metro. So I don't I know, I have called. something like that. I say Metro because it's an underground subway as opposed to a railway which is above ground. Um, it's pretty cool, very efficient and very easy to use. Considering that we're coming from Tokyo, we kind of have a grasp on how to use train systems. And theirs is much like Japan's. They have uh, easy access cards like the Suica. Um, and their machines to get your tickets are really easy to use. I think easier, they were actually a lot easier, easier to use yeah. than Japan's. Yeah. And instead of getting a ticket that comes out, you actually get this little chip. And what's inside? It's an RFID chip, I think. It is an RFID chip, which basically the computer tells it all the information that it needs to know, and any other little bot that it has to communicate with can read it. And they don't have to reprint anything. There's no trees involved in this, I don't think. <laughs> Um, it could be some sort of tree, <laughs> whatever. Um, so basically, it can be reused and reused and reused. I'd love to know how many places this little chip has been. All right, so we're lying down, having a nice view at this. Taipei 101, look at that, it's huge. It kind of feels like it's gonna fall on me from this angle. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just being strange and laying on the ground because whatever there's no one walking over here just relax and take it in so we basically just walked around in um, kind of like the posh area of Taipei this evening we went over to the um, Taipei 101 building and we were gonna go up in it but it's Saturday so it was like a really big line kind of expensive I don't know if we'll go up in it it's kind of cool just to stand at the bottom to me that's really awesome too and we went into the basement. They had a really cool like um, food court, and we got some Singapore chicken rice, which was awesome. Oh man, we didn't make a video about that. No. It was really good. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> if you go back and watch our Singapore videos from a couple years ago, we ate Singapore chicken rice there. If you're curious as to what it is. Anyway, um, and this area is kind of like Ginza or like Fifth Avenue in New York, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like just like what kind of. Talk about brands. What are things that are here? Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Michael Kurz, Kurz. I can't say it right. Um, pretty much any posh shop you can think of, they've got it here. And you'll see multiple ones. Like each mall has its own posh area with like high-end brands and stuff like that. So it's like, how can they do this and repeat it, copy paste, copy paste, so many times in a square block? Like I don't know how they can, but they do. And somehow all the stores continue to make money. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, what are they gonna say? 
Taipei is kind of like a blend of all the big cities that we've been to. It's like kind of like it's got the glitz and grime of Bangkok. It's got the heat and the poshness of Singapore. And the food courts. And the food courts, yeah. There's Which lots awesome. of food courts here. It's amazing. Um, there's one more city that we were talking about. Hong Kong. It's a bit like Hong Kong. It's a bit like Hong Kong. Uh, but not as amazing as Hong Kong. Something about Hong Kong is just so much more. It's because it's on the bay and like split yeah. in half. Yeah. Um, but we've only been here for what, like eight hours? <laughs> true. So. Yeah. So it's just like a mashup of all the different big cities in the world and the Asian world. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can find some New York City in here. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> all right, so it's the morning and it's breakfast time and there's tons of people out on the street right now. Lots of buses as well. And uh, lots of different strange foods, but one that we actually recognize is the nikuma. I don't think it's nikuma, I think it's a dumpling. Yeah, it's a dumpling it's here. It's more like, what do they call it in Hong Kong? Like dim sum or something like that? Isn't that what it was called? This is bigger than dim sum. Yeah, you're so. right, those were little. But anyway, it's a thing. We chose the one that had meat. It was 12, it was 12 kroners, which makes it cheap. And they have sauces here. Yeah. This is kind of like a, it's not soy sauce, it's like a thick kind of molasses type sauce, but I don't think it's sweet. And this is a spicy sauce. So I chose the spicy one. Nikuman. Huh? Nikuman. Nikuman. Yeah, but I'm in it for the pizza mod. I don't see no kanji, so there's a pizza here. It has cheese, it has spam, it has lettuce, egg, and other stuff. It looks like a uh, pancake or something. It looks like okonomiyaki. This is what, what it looks is. like in the bag. But in the bag. I, I put pepper on top, hot sauce, and uh, some brown sauce, that brown sauce. I don't know what it is. But like, we got a shot of them making it, so I'll put that in, and hopefully that explains it a little bit more. It's like a crepe with meat. This is all right. I mean, it's like okonomiyaki. Okay. And she's like, she put it in the bag and then she took the spatula and like smashed the spatula against the bag to kind of cut it up. But I don't know if that does anything. That lady knew what she was doing. She did. <laughs> and she guided was, me through the this whole was fucking situation. 45 Taiwanese kroners. So that makes it like a buck and some change. That's not so bad, right? I think maybe it's not spam, it's just ham. Or whatever. I don't want to get a mouthful of hot sauce, so I'm mixing it up. It's gonna be a mouthful of hot sauce. Mm. That's what breakfast tastes like. Oh, it does it? Yeah. <laughs> is that a is that a breakfast food? It's a breakfast. Food. Is it just as good as like a one of those McDonald's sandwiches you eat with like syrup and shit inside of it? <laughs> The McGriddle oh, is the God. goddess of all breakfast sandwiches. Her Speak shirt says a pan. Speaking of, look at that, there's a McDonald's. Guys, everybody should be proud of us. There's a McDonald's available and we, we, we went and did something adventurous instead of an adventurous McDonald's adventure. They shouldn't be proud of us, that's what we do. <laughs> in Japan, all we eat is McDonald's on video. What do you think? I think that this bag of slop is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's definitely got basil in it. It's really strong basil flavor. It tastes like, I mean, it, it tastes like, I mean, we're in Taiwan, of course. It tastes like Chinese food, kind of. Like. Something about it reminds me of pizza, and I think it's the basil, mm. in like a, a margarita pizza type situation. It's pretty damn good. It's really good. It's I wish there good. was. You know what? I wouldn't change it at all. I want no. more hot sauce, though. Yeah, a little I was scared of the hot okay. sauce. It, it, the hot sauce burnt me during the uh, the dumpling the incident. dumpling incident. <laughs> we could go back and put more on. I think they'd be okay with it. I think we're all right. Eric says I'm really bad at this camera thing. You stare at what I want you to stare at, which is the bag of slop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we had the dumpling, the nikuman. We had the egg spam slop in a bag thing and we're still a little bit hungry uh so far we've really only spent like two dollars on breakfast yeah. maybe three dollars on breakfast we'll say three dollars so we've come to one more place and we've spent about no i should say that was u.s dollars three u.s dollars and um 
When we say dollars, we mean American. When we say kroners, we mean Taiwanese dollars. Yeah, that's gonna be really difficult. So <laughs> I'll try to say American dollars as much as I can. Um, so we came here and for 49 Taiwanese kroners, <laughs> we ended with a sandwich and a drink. Which in the sandwich? Which is pretty good. Um, when I looked at the sandwich on the picture, it didn't look like it was made of hot dogs, but it's made of hot dogs. <laughs> but the reason that I got it is because this bread just looks fantastic. I it agree. Looks... And then we also got with this some milk tea that has... Syrup in it. So it's like a fucking McGriddle. <laughs> <sighs> so the hot dog thing has got uh, cucumbers and cheese and amazingness. It's really, really delicious. The bread is actually like flaky. Yeah, this is I awesome. I have sesame seeds. I'm very happy with the bread. Let's see how much flake I can get. Only a little bit. Wow. I think it went in my nose. For dessert, breakfast dessert, we found a fruit drink. And it's got like oranges and shit. And it was made by an old dude and an old lady. And it's really awesome. And we went through our first experience like having to ask how much something costs and we, we don't know how to say that in uh, Taiwanese. So I just like handed her my calculator on my phone. She was like, <laughs> 45 Taiwanese kronarks. And you got yourself a tasty drink. It's very orange. It smells like um, sun-kissed. But it tastes like it's actually healthy for you. How do you feel about the speed of the escalators in this country? They're really slow. Why are they so slow? Why are we I going? I don't know. Like, I want to relax, but I don't want to go slower than walking. <laughs> what it is. <laughs> so we have come to a park here in Taipei. A little north of Taipei, I think. Well, oh, yeah, north of the city. Um, we're about five or six stops away from the main station in the center of Taipei. And we're going on a hike, which some people might think that you can go on a hike there, you're in a city, but they actually have like hills and mountains <laughs> and uh, foresty bits that look like this. So we're gonna climb up one of these and hopefully we get a good view of Taipei uh, from afar. I don't know if we will, we're gonna find out. <laughs> and they built these like really ramps cool and ramps. stuff yeah. to make it like really easy to walk up. And um, like, look, city, <laughs> it's like right there. It's not like we're out in the, not really out in the wilderness. So this uh, little hike up this hill has turned into stairs. And I would like Katie to explain to everybody her process. No, she has a process. It's good. Why are you upset about it? Because you call me Slowbot. <laughs> Come on, Slowbot. Okay. We did a lot of hiking in Korea. And I, when we started, I was really bad at hiking. Incredibly terrible. Like, I'd go really, really fast and then I'd be dying in the next 10 minutes. So what I do is I just go really fucking slow. This is the speed that I go at. <laughs> And I could probably make it up the whole mountain. Maybe with just one break. In, if I go nice and slow. In five hours. <laughs> my heart, my heart is pumping, but it's pumping at a thick, good rate, not like a super fast rate where I'm killing myself. And I like it. It feels nice. So what do you call it? I call it roboting. Why? I'm roboting up the hill, because I just zone out. I am just a machine now. <laughs> <laughs> top of this hill there is this huge like um, shrine temple thingy mabob and then if you spin around there are these guys and they are guarding you from the suburbs of Taipei it's kind of cool looking and we were hoping we could see Taipei 101 from here but I think it's right through that hill so you can't see it so, uh, this ancient looking shrine, something seems out of place. Perhaps it's the digital, uh, digital display here. <laughs> I'm not sure that's traditional. Katie's excited because... Sausage. <laughs> this looks like our dog back home. And we call her Sausage, because she's fat. It's a pretty cool little area. We've got this big sign. 
And then we've got all these guys pulling water into a tank full of koi fish. And behind us is a gigantic turtle dragon. <laughs> that thing's badass. It's just a thing with a moving ball. I don't know if you can see. There we go. Look at that ball around, girl. Yeah. Check out these potato chip salsa. That looks pretty banging, doesn't it? Let's give it a go. Okay, you gotta do a one to ten. What is that? One being unedible, ten being amazing? Mm -hmm. Five? That was a two for me. It's just like yeah. eating tomatoes on a piece of yeah. potato. This was a bummer. I don't need a tomato potato, okay? <laughs> I want something good. Wow, it doesn't bode well for future potatoes here. Um, potato chips here. Man, it is hot up in here. People don't melt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't ask you questions so that you can put them on the internet. I ask you a question because you're smart. What did you ask? I said, is sweating a form of melting? <laughs> I think that that's a pretty good thing to think about. So we went into this little tiny Asian market and this really super nice lady hooked us up with a bunch of plums. So we got this bag of plums now and that's part of the crew. And uh, Katie made a friend. Is it the plum? The plum lady. Oh yeah, yeah. And after she told us how much the plums were going to be, she shoved other fruit in our hands. I have no idea what she put in my It was my like hand, a green plum of some sort. It was just incredible. So after I got the plums, I was like, why didn't I get those things? So I had to walk away from that lady because she probably would have taken all my money. <laughs> and we would have had some sort of fruit problem. <laughs> So we have digital copies of Lonely Planet on our like um, Android devices, these things, right? But we don't have any data or anything. So we've got these maps and this has GPS on it and I've offloaded the maps and we've got Lonely Planets and um, the Lonely Planets are as usual awful. And what you are seeing right now is Katie wandering around looking for something that's on a Lonely Planet map that um, doesn't actually exist where the Lonely pa Planet map puts it. Lonely Planet is really good for, like, getting an idea of where things are. But it's really, really bad. Like, not where things are, but like, it's like, there are waterfalls and they do exist, or whatever. <laughs> but actually finding the place with a Lonely Planet map is a fucking disaster. And I mean, sometimes that's cool because it gets you into exploring certain places, but sometimes it's like... I only have so much time in a place and it sucks that I, I paid money for this resource and it's just getting me someplace and I waste three hours wandering around in circles looking for whatever I'm looking for. So it can be kind of like a mixture of a blessing and a frustration depending on what your situation is. And at the moment it got us to walk across the city and see a bunch of things and find some plums. So it's not terrible or anything, but it would be cool if we could like, you know, find what we were looking for. But it's definitely not right. <laughs> the map that they have is definitely wrong. So we're walking from a someplace to a, another place and in the middle we found this tangle of streets and it looks like this is like a little neighborhood and you can see like all these like they, they're, they're houses like they're front doors of people's houses and stuff and some of the windows you can see and see like their um living rooms and then you can see them i didn't see any of them i saw them i heard some of them but whenever you see little alleyways like this if other people walk there just walk there and if they don't walk there also walk there. Walk there. It's okay. Yeah, these little creepy alleyways in Asia, they're not dangerous like they look like in the States. You wouldn't come down here because you, you get robbed, son. Uh, we are at Gong Ming Street. We've traveled on the metro, the Taipei metro, as far north as we can. And it basically takes you out to the coast where the river meets the edge of the island. And Gongming Street is just a street filled with tons of people, tons of sweets, tons of drinks, tons of random souvenirs. It's like a one-stop shop for anything you could want right now. 
I want another drink. I could have another drink right now. Um, we got a, a lime drink that I had that was pretty good. Uh, the the start of it was really good, the end of it not so good. It's like the ice melted and it got kind of yeah, watery. Yeah, it got watery. And um, we haven't really had any sweet treats since we walked down the street, but we've mm -hmm. been eating plums all day. <laughs> How many plums are we down to? We're only down, we're down to three plums. I think she gave us nine. So we've eaten <laughs> six plums. Yeah, I've had three. Plums, Jerry. Um, and uh, we just saw a dog driving a motorcycle with a helmet on. And True story. There are some real, really cute kids over here, like letting balloons go into the sky. And just, we're sitting in front of an amazing temple, and it's just really, really nice and relaxing just to watch the rest of the world go by for a little while. We gotta do this quickly because this is going to. <laughs> That's a lot Chocolate, of ice cream, girl. Vanilla, lots of ice cream, melting quickly. Eat. Get the knees up. Oh, we didn't make it. <laughs> All right, we're in Shilin, and Shilin is very famous in Taiwan for its night market. It's supposed to have a lot of people, lots of different sweet treats and drinks, which we just came from Gongmin Street. Man, you got a good memory. <laughs> exactly the same thing. So we've just been eating all day long, and we just had some pasta at a really great place called uh, Kirin Pasta. If you ever see a Kirin Pasta, go and try it. It was really, really good. I think it's a chain, or we think it's a I chain. I think it's from Japan. Oops. <laughs> uh, it was really good. The, they cooked like tons of different pastas at one time, and stellar, completely stellar. And now we're on to the sweet treats, and I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm gonna be like 20 pounds heavier by tomorrow morning. All the walking? And the walk, well, we ate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. That's not bad. I like that flat top. So Taiwan is like a motor scooter place, way, way more than, than Japan is. Um, and so we got a, like a, me a recommendation from a message board about a motorbike place, because we want to rent one. And um, the dude emailed me back a few minutes ago and said he didn't have one available. So I asked him if he had any recommendations on another place to go, but um, now we're waiting for him to respond. It's because we were hoping to be on a motorbike tomorrow. But um, I don't know, I guess if we're not on a motorbike tomorrow, we'll probably find something else to do in Taipei because it's a pretty big place. I want a motorbike. They're still going, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and over there. Jeez. Beep, beep. shops and stupidly I forgot that we're trying to travel on a motorbike and I decided I needed a pair of really shiny shoes <laughs> so now where am I gonna put that in a bag on a motorbike you're gonna wear those on your hands <laughs> yeah not very bright of me but we'll figure it out and uh, so there's a lot of food here but uh, it smells so bad that I can't imagine ever eating any of it yeah it's not like a good nice Asian market smell. It really does smell like a pig farm. Yeah. I grew up on a pig farm, seriously. It smells like a pig farm. It's gross. <laughs> but it's got the vibe of like any other Asian market, like a good Asian market. So it's kind of fun as well. It's cool to be here. So to the side of this night market, there is this cool temple and everybody comes here and sits down with their snacks and enjoys their snacks. And it's a temple with yet another digital sign in front of it. This is a Taiwanese thing. I have never seen this in any other Asian countries. So some of this has like a circus vibe to it. Like, uh, check out this dude with the bow and arrow. Like, he's over here and he's about to shoot and try to hit a balloon. He hit a balloon, but it bounced off the balloon. That is not a good arrow. 
and then Katie's over here watching some people do I don't know what, like playing some sort of game to try to win prizes. And I don't know, there's just people everywhere, man. It's Sunday night. This isn't even like Friday or Saturday. This is like, there's a lot of people, you know? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna play some sort of Taiwanese game that I've never ever seen in my life. I gave this guy some money. He gave me back a lot of money. This doesn't cost very much, okay. Uh, basically, I think I spent less than a dollar to play this game. Uh, here we go. So if you've ever seen Mahjong, this looks a lot like Mahjong. And I have tiles here. So this game's kind of like bingo. I'm not sure how I win. I know the guy next to me won. So uh, he told me to pick 15 of these tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. Now I have to flip them over and put them where they go. I'm gonna get addicted to this. It's gonna be good. So basically, um, if this is unclear, they, they give you 50, you get to choose 15 random tiles, you turn them over, and then you need to make a line this way or a line this way. Um, it's pretty cheap to play, and if you win, I guess you get like a thing, and if you win multiple times, then you get a bigger thing. I guess that's how this works. Okay, so the man next to me really helped me, and the guy that worked there was actually really nice in helping me to understand how to do everything. Usually when you play games like this, I always feel like they're just gonna take my money. But I actually left with money, and- You left uh, with money left over. You didn't win that money. I didn't win that money. You just money. didn't spend no, that money. No. I just had some self-control, <laughs> that's all. Um, I didn't win, but I came really, really close. I had, it, it's basically my Mahjong uh, bingo. You have to get six in a line and that's it. And I didn't manage to do that at all. <laughs> I was this close. Like, uh, if I had chosen three different tiles, I would have won, but I didn't. And I didn't see how that would be addictive, though. Oh, yeah. I want to go back and play right now. <laughs> I want to go sit next to my nice friend, and I want to win so that him and I can be like, yes! <laughs> okay, there's a durian down the street. That's the worst news ever. <laughs> Let's go get a durian. I think every day I'll probably have an encounter with a durian. <laughs> I don't look forward to it. Come on, man. I think I might leave based on that. <laughs> I'm trying to get her to just buy one and crack it open and just eat it with a spoon. I'm just gonna end up vomiting it. It's just gonna be nasty. You need that with if a spoon. If you guys like durian, I'm sorry. I just can't get in on that. So we got strawberries and shit, and it is incredible. If you're ever here, I recommend getting the strawberries and shit. Some what? Strawberries and shit. So that market we went to was like, it was awesome because it was so big that it had different feels. Like it had different neighborhoods. Some areas like felt a little grittier. Some of, there's like a Nike store, like a legit Nike store in the middle of it, which is not something you would normally see in an Asian night market. I don't know, it just had a, it was cool. It was just really, really big. And we definitely did not explore the whole thing. Our hotel on the inside is pretty posh, pretty nice. It kind of seems like a business cubicle situation with really fluffy blankets. It's kind of nice. I like that idea. Um, but the building on the outside looks really, really gritty. Super gritty. I would almost say looking on the outside, I wouldn't imagine that there would be a hotel in there, but we managed to just catch a glimpse of the word cube in or in cube. I don't know what it's called. But uh, we thought we'd give it a try, and it turns out that the prices are okay, and it's a nice place to sleep. So this is the inside of the hotel, and last night I stayed in this room, B7. But tonight, I stayed over here in B17. And this is what's going on. <laughs> I hide the panties! The panties were out? They were! And this is our room. So I just came in, and this, this is it. This is the whole thing. Let me stand back really far. <laughs> that is as far back as it goes. And there is one bed, two beds, 
and that's it. But it's super clean, like yeah. miraculously clean. And they have TVs that we're never going to yeah, use. They have little TVs we don't care about. But they have lights in the wall right by the bed with light switches, and they also provide headphones and a plug by the bed, which I think is really nice. And I used their headphones last night because it felt better than my headphones. Ew. They don't go in your ear, they go around your it's ear. It's still funky, dude. I wouldn't be using up on this. Yeah, so yeah, it's a little tiny white room and it's super clean. And the bathrooms are down the hall and the showers are eh. Yeah, they're eh. They're okay. And on the roof of the hotel, apparently, I've never seen this, Katie has informed me, is some things. I don't think we're even supposed to be out here, but she tends to do this. And then we come over here. There's Katie. And that thing. I'm gonna give this a zoom. I apologize for the zooming, but we're gonna do it. That thing is Taipei 101. It's pretty dang cool. Oh. And over here, it's not very exciting, but it's kind of cool to show you the neighborhood that we're living in. It's a little bright and exciting. There's lots of people, like, right now. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, it's 9 o'clock. And there's a lot of people just bustling around, walking, scooting, Not driving. as many as there were last night. Last night there were people everywhere. Yeah, there were people everywhere, but it, it's just kind of an exciting little area. And you can go in all these nooks and crannies and there's tons of delicious food and jagged nails to cut your arm on. And there's just... It's very lively and fun. Crunch.